Okay, so today we are going to talk about coma. We'll discuss that what is coma, what is the presentation and causes of coma. We'll discuss that how do you approach a patient who is in coma. We'll discuss that how do you treat it. What is coma? Coma is a state of prolonged unconsciousness with loss of reaction to external stimuli. Patient is unconscious and patient does not respond to the external stimuli that you give him. When you try to talk to him, when you give pain, that patient is not responding. That is called as a coma. What are the causes of coma? Causes of coma are divided into two major categories. One metabolic causes and the other one are neurological causes. In the metabolic causes, the major causes are drug intoxication like TCA overdose, antidepressant overdose, poisoning, carbon monoxide poisoning, alcohol intoxication, hypoglycemia can cause coma, hyperglycemia, hypoxia, CO2 retention, CO2 narcosis in COPD patient, septicemia can lead to coma, mexidemic coma, hypothyroid coma, Edisonian crisis, hepatic and uremic encephalopathy. These are all the metabolic causes that can lead to coma. In the neurological causes, we have trauma, injury to the brain, any accident can lead to coma, meningitis, encephalitis, infection of the meninges and the brain, tumor within the brain, vascular causes like stroke, hemorrhage in the brain, epilepsy, excessive electrical activity in the brain. These are all the causes that can injure the brain and can lead to coma. Basically, all these metabolic and neurological causes have somehow related to the brain injury that leads to coma. If a patient presents to you in a deeply unconscious state, in the state of coma, the first thing that you need to do is that you have to approach the patient in ABC manner. You protect the airways. You protect the airway. Airway is the top priority in these patients. Consider intubation if the Glasgow coma scale is less than it. If the patient's Glasgow coma scale is less than it, intubate the patient straight away. Then maintain an IV access. Give IV fluids if required. At this point, we do not know the cause of coma. Now, if you suspect trauma as a possible cause of coma, if the patient had a motor vehicle accident and after that, that patient presented to you, the first thing is that you have to stabilize the spine. You have to stabilize the cervical spine. If there is a suspected cervical injury that can injure the spinal cord, you have to stabilize the cervical spine if trauma is a possible cause. Then coming to the hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia is a very, very important cause. Most of the time you will find that patient would present to you mostly diabetic patients who are taking insulin, who are taking oral hypoglycemic drugs. When they present to you in emergency department in a deeply unconscious state and you check their RBS, their RBS comes out to be 30 or 40 they are having a hypoglycemia, severe hypoglycemia. Check their blood glucose and if they are hypoglycemic, give 200 ml, 10% glucose IV state. At this point, we, are, we do not know the cause of coma. What we are trying to do is that we are trying to slowly and gradually rule out all the possible and common causes of coma. Then after that, if the patient is seizing, you have to control the seizures. Treat the potential causes. The common causes of the coma must be ruled out first and treated first. The common causes of coma include trauma, hypoglycemia, opiate overdose, benzodiazepine overdose, TCA overdose. These are the common causes of coma. So you have to find out these causes. And if their patient is having a narcotic overdose, if there is opiate overdose, give IV naloxone 0.4 to 2 mg IV. And you have to give uh, IV flumazenil if the patient is having benzodiazepine toxicity. Chronic alcoholics usually present to emergency department with a deeply unconscious state. You check their blood glucose level and they are hypoglycemic. Your basic instinct would be to replace uh, glucose to give IV dextrose. Remember, if you give IV dextrose only in these patients, it would lead to lactic acidosis and they would further go into coma and they would not recover from it. Why is it so? It is because that these chronic alcoholic patients are hypoglycemic and they are also thiamine deficient. As we know that alcoholism causes thiamine deficiency. So if you give glucose 
without thiamine it would lead to lactic acidosis and lactic acidosis will further deepen their coma they will further go into coma they will go into acidotic breathing they will be acidotic and their condition would worsen if you give glucose without thiamine so in a chronic alcoholic patient always give glucose with thiamine these patients these alcoholics are in wernicke's encephalopathy thiamine deficient glucose deficient what you do is that you take iv thiamine pebrinex two pair of pebrinex ampule in 100 ml of 5% glucose are given over 30 minutes so you are replacing the glucose you are also replacing um, thiamine in these patients and you would see improvement in these patients after giving thiamine with glucose and other antidotes are indicated if there is a history of intake of other poisons or toxins you take brief collateral history and you do examination so first what we did was that we ruled out all the common causes of coma common causes of deeply unconscious state in which trauma benzodiazepine overdose opioid overdose hypoglycemia these being the most important ones in the brief collateral history what you need to ask is that how was the patient found when was he last seen when was his last seen to be okay was it abrupt or gradual onset that he went into coma or deeply unconscious state is there any suggestion of trauma is there any history of fits that that patient had and after that he got unconscious was there any recent complaint like headache fever vertigo depression or is there any foreign travel for infectious diseases is there any chronic drug that he is taking any antidepressant or any toxin exposure was the heater on the whole night that would lead to carbon monoxide poisoning you must look for signs of trauma and stabilize the sort of spine if there are signs of trauma you check their respiratory rate and respiratory rate would give you a hint about the type of toxicity that that patient might be having the cause of coma if the respiratory rate is increased it is seen in obstructed airway in dka patients there is hyperventilation ka small breathing in aspiration in salicylate toxicity you would see increased respiratory rate these patients are usually acidotic and what they are trying to do is they are trying to wash out carbon dioxide to reduce the acidity in the blood if there is decreased respiratory rate it indicates toward poisoning of substances like opiate poisoning barbiturate poisoning tca poisoning all these conditions cause respiratory depression so the respiratory rate is an important hint that what type of toxicity or poisoning that patient might be having you check the heart rate whether it is slow bradycardic whether it is tachycardic or whether it is normal if the patient is bradycardic that patient is going toward a hard block if the patient is having hard block suspect that that patient might have taken beta blocker or opiate intake if the patient is tachycardic that patient might be in supraventricular tachycardia ventricular tachycardia anticholinergic overdose any drug that is anticholinergic would cause severe tachycardia and arrhythmia then look at the pupils of the patient if there are small pinpoint pupils it is most likely seen in opioid overdose dilated pupils are seen in tca poisoning there are many causes of pinpoint pupil dilated pupil bradycardia tachycardia increased respiratory rate decreased respiratory rate but what i am trying to cover here is the common causes of these things common causes are more important look for stigmata of disease look for liver disease signs like severe ascites look for hypothyroidism sign loss of hair and myxedemic look look for alcoholic signs look for the smell of breath smell of breath can tell you about alcohol intoxication ketotic fruity smell is seen in dka patient hepatic fetor and hepatic failure look for signs of meningism meningitis i have talked about signs of meningism in detail in my video on meningitis you treat the potential causes you take the collateral history and examination and then you send investigations now we are diving in deeper into the causes of coma what caused coma in this patient and why is this patient not getting better even after providing the initial treatment you send abgs you send full blood count electrolytes lft crps ethanol screening toxin screen toxicology screen is very important drug levels blood cultures if you suspect any infection urine culture if you suspect infection chest x ray malarial parasite 
arrange CT of head if indicated, if there is head trauma or if there is any other indication. And after doing CT, you can go for lumbar puncture if needed. According to the history, according to the stigmata of disease that you find in that patient, the signs and symptoms would hint you toward the diagnosis and accordingly you go for the investigations. And most likely you would be able to find much information from these labs and treat that patient. And in many cases, you would see that the diagnosis is unclear. In, in some situations, you won't be able to make a diagnosis that what caused this coma. And patient presents to you in emergency department and it, he is brought to you by unknown people that are not his relative, that do not know anything about the history of the patient, no drug history, no medical condition, no medical comorbidities known. In such patients, sometimes you do not have any diagnosis. In such patients, you must treat the treatable to save the patient's life. What you do is that all the common causes must be treated in such patients. In such patients, you, you have to save the patient's life. And in such case, what you do is that you give oxygen, you check their glucose level, if they're hypoglycemic, you give glucose, you give naloxone, you give IV thiamine. And if the patient is septic, you give cefotaxime, 2 gram BD. If you suspect that that patient is having cerebral malaria leading to coma, you give artimeter, quinone. And if you suspect encephalitis, you give acyclovir. So in a patient in which your diagnosis is unclear, what you do is you treat the treatable all the things that are common causes of coma, you treat all of them so that the patient's life is saved. In summary, we talked about what is coma, a deeply unconscious state. We talked about the causes of coma, metabolic causes, neurological causes. We talked about how to approach ABC approach, stabilize cervical spine, check glucose, control seizures, examination findings of all the common causes of coma treat the potential causes and take brief collateral history and do examination, send investigations. And if the diagnosis is unclear, treat the treatable causes, oxygen, glucose, naloxone, IV thiamine, and specifics. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on emergency medicine. The link of those videos is given in the description below. Thank you very much.